Welcome to our Sunday morning service. This will be the 17th of May 2020 and at this stage we are in day 50 something of lockdown and I hope that you are just enjoying yourself as you gather together with us this morning in worship. I want to say welcome to you those who are watching from around the world. Um, it's so awesome to know that there are people all around the globe that are sharing with us in the service. I also just want to say that I've had a few comments about my beard and uh, I'm going to get you, those of you who've been a bit rude about it. Um, the, the beard, as you can see, is very gray. And so this gray beard, uh, every little gray hair you can see here, is a day in the life of a parent who has to homeschool. So those of you who are homeschooling your kids, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, we are here to worship God and we're going to open in a word of prayer. I'm going to invite you just to know that God is amongst us. The candle is lit to remind us of Christ's presence. And so come, let us pray uh, together. Let's pray. Let us pray. O Holy Lord, you are worthy of all our praises. You reign in majesty and you are our Lord forever. We thank you for allowing us to be graced by your presence today. Hallowed be your name. Accept our love and adoration in Jesus' name. We are here to pray, Almighty God that you will always light our way with your presence. We resist evil and pray that your light will always shine on us. May all people see your glory through us and come to worship and praise you as the living God. Amen. I wanted to ask you a question this morning. Have you ever been in a situation where you've needed to have some courage or bravery? And uh, if you haven't had made a decision or done something, then maybe your life or circumstances would have taken a different path. So I want you to think about that question, and I want to share with you two examples, two that came to mind very quickly when I was thinking about this. Um, before I even share those, let me just remind you, in the movie, We Bought a Zoo, there's a lovely phrase by Benjamin Mee, who says that all you need sometimes is 20 seconds of madness, 20 seconds of courage, and then you can do something courageous. Well, the two things I want to share with you today probably didn't need 20 seconds of courage, they needed a bit less um, of that. But the first one has to do with um, a bridge swinging incident when I was in my early 20s. Just to give you a little bit of context, it involved some friends, a Christian youth camp, and some young ladies that we were trying to impress. Anyway, on one particular afternoon, the camp decided to do an adventure outreach program, and all of us went along to the edge of this bridge, and everybody was excited about harnessing up and jumping off the bridge. Well, I'm petrified of heights. And uh, you know what happens when you're in this peer pressure, and like I say, you're trying to impress some of the young ladies. So you stand in the queue, and you're waiting, and you're waiting, and my stomach was just in knots. And uh, everyone thought that I was being a gentleman, because I was saying, no, well, you go first, you go first. And eventually, I was the last person. And I realized now, in order to save face, I was going to have to get over my fear of heights and jump off this bridge. So they harnessed me up and they made me stand on the edge of the bridge and I was just petrified. Anyway, I jumped off or I was pushed off. I can't remember what happened and I did the bridge swing. Now, I wanted to say to you, it was nothing like the Storms River bridge swing, but it was bad enough for me. And I've sworn I will never do it again and I've kept to that promise. The second incident had to do with standing up and doing my very first trial sermon. I was 21, and I had often done a few talks at our youth group and so on, but this was the very first sermon I was doing in big church. And I know that for weeks beforehand, I, I knew of the dates, and my stomach was again churning, and I was just petrified. And then the day before, I was trying to finish everything off, and I just felt completely nervous. And I needed this couple of seconds of courage to get me through that moment and even standing up to preach my legs were all wobbly and that but thankfully God took over and uh, and things managed to to work out now I'm going to be sharing a little bit about how the spirit of God makes us brave today and uh, I want to take us into John chapter 14 which is our key text Peter is going to read it for us but just to give you a little bit of context Jesus has told his disciples that he is going to be leaving them, and they are clearly worried about that. And so in this passage, Jesus promises them that he is going to leave them the Holy Spirit. 
And I think that just as we read it, try and get ourselves in the mind of the disciples. Their whole experience is now being framed by a sense of anxiety and fear. They're about to face another crisis. And um, this is the word that Jesus gives to them. So let's turn, if you want to turn in your Bible, John 14, you can do so. But let's hear the word of God read for us. The reading is from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 27. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will obey what I command. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Okay, so as we have heard that scripture, there's so many wonderful things that come out of that for us today. But let's just take a few verses at a time. Jesus says in verse 15, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And he's really speaking then about the Ten Commands. And uh, for those of us who want the summarized version, he is saying to us, love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And those are commands that I think really resonate with us even in today's time. Then he comes to verse 16, and this is the focal verse for us. It says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you to be with you forever. Now in this verse 16, there are three words that each begin with the letter A that I want to mention quickly. The first thing is Jesus says, I will ask the Father. And this is a wonderful thing because Jesus is actually saying to his disciples, I am going to pray for you. Because isn't part of prayer asking the Father? And so Jesus says to his disciples, look, even though I won't be with you in person, I'm going to ask the Father to send you the Spirit. And I'm going to be keep asking the Father to be with you. The second thing is he uses the word advocate. I'm going to come to that in a moment. But uh, it is the Greek word parakletos. And, and as I say, I'll speak about that in a, in a second. But the other, uh, the third letter is, um, he says, I'm going to give you another advocate. And another, the Greek word is apollos, which really means another one of the same kind. So Jesus is just trying to reassure his disciples to say, look, as you got used to me, as you've been following me and, and watching me, so I'm going to send you another of the same kind, which we understand as being the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. But let me come to that Greek word parakletos, because that's the word for spirit in John chapter 4, 14 verse 16. Now, in some languages, there are words that are just untranslatable. And even in South Africa, we've got 11 official languages. And often we have a bit of a melting pot of different words that come into our conversations. Let me give you a few examples. If you use the word Ubuntu, 
it's very difficult to translate. We know what it means. In fact, the word means human humanity. But it's so much more than that. If you use the Afrikaans word lacquer, now in South African context, lacquer actually means sweet. But if you say something is lacquer, you also say it's nice. And I think Afrikaans actually is such a rich language. There are so many other words that aren't really translatable in English. Let me give you a few other examples and apologies from Afrikaans. Um, fat cook. The translation is fat cake. But a fat cook isn't really a fat cake, is it? And how about spork awesome? Spork awesome, the direct translation is ghost breath. But those of you who are from South Africa, you know that ghost breath or spook awesome is actually candy floss. And there's another one. There's two more I want to share with you. The one is skoer flief, which means shoulder fly. And I didn't know this, but a shoulder fly or skoer flief actually is a backseat driver. Now, some of you who are watching with your spouses now, maybe you could just nudge them and call them a skoer flief. And there's one more, and I learned this word this week, and I love it. It's called a papier vampire, or in some Afrikaans circles, a kram drukker. Now, papier vampire is paper vampire. Now, guess what that is? It's a statement. Now, I hope I've shown you in some way that language sometimes falls short for us. And as we go through the sermon, if you're really bored, you can think about all kinds of other words. But the word parakletos which is used here in John chapter 14, is a word that in English we've tried to translate. And the various Bible commentators have used words like advocate, which is somebody who comes and stands alongside you in your defense. They've used the word counselor, which is also good. We understand what a counselor does. A counselor is somebody who comes into our lives and our situation and tries to guide us and help us to, to make good decisions or guides us in our time of, of crisis. The other word is the word comforter. Now, comforter, it works. The translation works. But in our modern context, if I said to you, are you comforting somebody? Often you would use that in the context of grief or sorrow. And so it works up to a point. And then the other word that's often translated is the word helper. And the trouble with that is that we often use helper linking in with assistant or a servant. But actually, if you put all four of those words together, we get a better idea of the work of the Holy Spirit. Because what Jesus is saying to his disciples is he's saying, don't be afraid. The Spirit of God that I'm going to give to you, I'm going to ask the Father to give you, is going to be all of those things, and he's going to come to your defense. Now, when William Tyndale was translating the Bible into English for the very first time, the Latin word that he was wrestling with, with parakletos, is the word that we get now for the English word brave. The Latin word is fortis. Now, apologies for the, the English lesson here today. But this is important, friends, because the work of the Holy Spirit is also to give us courage and to make us brave. Let me read to you a, a, a commentary that says this. The Spirit of God braces us, he revives us, he revigorates us, he puts a new heart and courage into those of us who are feeling dispirited. And this is what the Spirit of God did. If you go back to the book of Acts, and remember Acts is just short for the Acts of the Apostles. The only reason why the Apostles were able to do all of those things was because the Parakletos, the Spirit of God, was able to give them that courage. So when Peter stands up to do that wonderful sermon at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, it is the Spirit of God who gives him that three seconds of, of courage. When Stephen is stoned, or Hoswick, it is the parakletos that gives him the fortitude and the courage to die um, glorifying God. When Paul goes out to share the gospel and to, to go out as a missionary, knowing that he persecuted Christians, it is the parakletos that gives him the courage to do all of these things. The other reading for today, one of the other Old Testament uh, verses is from Zechariah chapter 8 verse 13. Listen to what verse 13 says. Do not be afraid, but let your hands be strong. And that's 
what Jesus is saying. Don't be afraid. I'm going to send you the Spirit and He's going to enable your hands to be strong to do the work that I've called you to do. There's a lovely modern song by Amanda Cook um, and it's called You Make Me Brave. I just want to read a few of the words because I think she wrote it um, remembering Simon Peter as he jumped out of the boat in that wonderful story. She, she writes the words like this, Your love in wave after wave crashes over me. It crashes over me. For you are for us. You are not against us. Champion of heaven, you made a way for all of us to enter in. Because you make me brave. You make me brave. And friends, that is the prayer that you and I can pray today. Lord Jesus, please make me brave. Allow your spirit to be with me in whatever I'm facing. Because, as I said earlier on, 50 days plus into lockdown, many of us are struggling. And we need the Spirit of God to help us at this time. You know, sometimes in our conversations and language, we use the phrase, we need something to help us cope. And people will turn to all kinds of things to help them cope, and some of them are not always good and helpful. But it is the Spirit of God that helps us cope at this time. It is the Spirit of God who Jesus promises to send that is going to help us cope in these times. In verse 18, Jesus says something else. He says, I will not leave you as orphans. And again, as we use the word orphan, we have in mind a picture of what we think an orphan is or who an orphan is. And yes, it's pretty similar. An orphan is somebody who doesn't have parents. But in the context of Jesus' day, it was more than that. It was somebody who didn't have a father, but somebody who didn't have a teacher. And so when the disciples are saying to Jesus, but you're going to be leaving us, he's saying, I'm not going to leave you without a teacher. Apparently, when Plato heard that Socrates, now remember Plato was a student of Socrates, when he heard that Socrates had died, he was, he was mortified because he said, now we've been left as orphans without a father. And he was speaking about a teacher there. And Jesus says to his disciples, don't worry because I'm not going to leave you without a rabbi, without a teacher, without a master, because that's another thing that the Holy Spirit does for us. It is the Spirit of God who teaches us. Even as we read in today's scripture, it is not me who's teaching, but it is the Spirit of God who is helping us to understand the scriptures that are given to us. And that's another wonderful gift that God gives. Then he says in verse 23, I've just skipped a few verses, but verse 23, Jesus replied, anybody who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. A wonderful picture here that Jesus shares. In fact, we, we get a glimpse into what we know as the Trinity, where Jesus says, we will come and make our home. Now, that is an invitation for you and I today, that although we are watching this in our homes, or maybe in our bedrooms, or wherever we're watching it, Jesus is saying to his disciples, and he says to you and I, I am wanting, I'm willing, I'm longing to come and take up residence in your heart, in, in your life. In fact, remember in the beginning of John 14, go back and have a read of that, Jesus was telling his disciples, look, I'm going to prepare a place for you, a home with many mansions. And so now he uses the same image and he says, look, I want to come and we want to come and make our home with you. Now, some of us think, gee, but my life's a mess. You know, can you imagine God coming into your home right now? And I know some of you are watching in your pajamas and your hair's all over the place and maybe you've got a funny great beard. But, but Jesus says, I want to come into your life where you are at right now. Do you remember when Zacchaeus, I love the story of Zacchaeus, when Jesus encountered him, he said to him, Zacchaeus, I want to come to your home today because I want to come and have a meal with you. Zacchaeus didn't say, oh my goodness, my home's a mess. I need to go and get it tidied up. He was so excited that Jesus wanted to come and be with him. He said, come, please. And that is what the Spirit of God wants to do, is to come and make his home amongst us. Verse 25 says, all of this I've spoken while I'm still with you, but the advocate, the parakletos, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. 
Because friends, just as the disciples needed reminding, so you and I also need reminding that Jesus will be with us along the way, along our spiritual journey. I come to verse 27, which is the last verse for us today. Jesus says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I don't give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled, and don't be afraid. Friends, Jesus leaves you and I the one thing that the Roman soldiers, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, the scribes, everybody who was against him, the one thing that they could not take from him. They took his clothes, they took his dignity, they took his life, but they could not take Jesus' gift of peace. And so Jesus says to them, my peace, my shalom, I will leave with you. So he says, don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. And unfortunately, again in our times today, we think of peace as the absence of trouble or the absence of war. And it is that, but it's so much more because Jesus says, I don't give to you as the world gives. And so friends, Living in a time of peace should not be equal to God being with us. God is with us even in a time of chaos and crisis. In fact, the peace that Jesus comes to offer me and to offer you is that despite our circumstances, we can know, we can know, we can know, we can know the peace that passes all understanding. It doesn't make sense how in a time of lockdown and in a time of global crisis, we could still have a sense of peace. That is a gift that comes from the Holy Spirit. I was thinking of an illustration that uh, I wanted to share with us today, and uh, I couldn't find one that I thought was appropriate. And I was looking for one that maybe would have um, inspired us, like a famous person and so on. Somebody who had that three seconds or 20 seconds of bravery and we looked up to them, almost like the story of Nate Saint last week. And then suddenly I thought to myself, you know what, you and I, we're just the ordinary Joe Bloggs or the Mary Bloggs. We are ordinary people. And sometimes those stories, they inspire me, but they also think, well, I also think, well, you know, that's them, and, but what about me? And then I realized, reading something, that the parakletos, the Spirit of God, is there for you and I. And so there's a few groups of people that I want to just speak into today. Uh, not only these people, but so much more. But I want to say to you this morning, if you're watching, if you are a single parent, the parakletos is there for you. If you are an elderly person staying alone at this time, and uh, you're just desperate to see your children, your grandchildren, know that the parakletos is there for you. If you are a student or a scholar, uncertain about your studies and where this year is going to go, I invite you to ask the parakletos, the comforter, the helper, to be at, at home with you. If you are serving on the front lines, if you're still working, or if you're a nurse or a doctor or a paramedic in the police force, may the parakletos be with you. If you are a parent at home trying to manage homeschooling, may you also know that the parakletos is with you. If you are worried about finances, if you're worried about your job, call out to God and may the parakletos come and comfort you. If you are worried about your mental health, if someone that you love is struggling at this time, we pray that the parakletos comes in and just brings an overwhelming sense of God's presence amongst you. Wherever you find yourself today, friends, and there are so many of us in different circumstances, it is my prayer that we will know the Spirit of God amongst us. As Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, Be strong and courageous. Don't be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever we go, wherever we watch this, the parakletos is with us. The one thing that we must remember is while Jesus was walking on the earth, he could only be in one place at a time. He was limited to our human bodies. And so the disciples had to go to be with him and crowds had to come to be with him. But in sending us the Holy Spirit, the parakletos, 
the gift of that is that wherever we are in the world, even if you're watching this today in England or Belgium or Australia or in America, wherever you happen to be watching this, God's Spirit is amongst us. And that is such a gift. I want to tell you one more story and we're going to close. There was a missionary who was lent a car while he was going around his, um, his ministry. And unfortunately, the car had a bit of a problem with the starter cable. But this missionary didn't know much about cars. And so he worked out that the way he would get his car to work was to go and park it on a hill, pull the handbrake up, and that whenever he was finished his ministry and his uh, you know, prayer time with people, he would jump in the car and allow the car to roll down the hill and then he would jump start it. After a few years, the missionary finished his term and a new missionary came to take his place and so they handed over the car. And this new ministry, uh, missionary happened to know a little bit about cars. And so as they were going through the handover, the, the first missionary said, look, the car's a bit of a dodgy car, but you just got to park it on a hill and you can get it to work eventually. So the new missionary popped the hood of the, of the car and he looked around and he was good at cars. And so he fiddled here and there, managed to tweak a cable. And he said, I think I've managed to figure it out. And he put the hood down and got in and turned the car. And guess what? It started. So after years of trying to park on funny hills and making sure he could jumpstart the car, the other missionary said he learned a powerful lesson. Is that sometimes we have the Spirit of God at our disposal, but we don't call out to Him. We don't know how to get connected. And friends, it's not a mystery. Being connected with the Spirit of God is not just for ministers or pastors or church leaders. In fact, it is, it is for everybody. And so I pray for us today that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, is that you would call out to the Spirit of God. Come, let us pray together. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me and use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. And so Lord God, as we continue in this time of uncertainty as we face the impact of COVID-19. We call out to you. We ask you, Lord, that you would be our advocate, you would be our comforter, our counselor, our helper, that Holy Spirit, you would be our friend. And God, help us to remember that we are never, ever alone because you are with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, thank you for tuning in. I'm going to invite you, please go to our website. We have an extended version of a service. There's some songs there for you. We've got children's ministry, teen ministry, and there's also a lovely little presentation that Ken has put together for us. Those of you who are local in the Fisher and Cape Town area, you'll recognize many of those photographs. It's just to bring some cheer and encouragement into your life. God bless you, and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Champion.